Hello, this is Domenico, and this is part two of illustrating monopolistic competition with the real world example of Netflix as a subscription video streaming service. In the first video, we looked at Netflix going from super normal profit to normal profit. And in this video, we're going to look at them going from normal profit to a loss. Um, so just recently, you can see, well, you know, over time, you can see that the value of Netflix's stock has increased. You know, it was about $10 back in. Um, 2010 and then since then it's risen to a max of about 645 dollars just an incredible increase in the value of the stock and we can also see that uh, part of that increase in the value of stock was during the covid pandemic people are locked at home and so demand increasing for entertainment home entertainment so that really was a boom a boost for the stock but as we come out of the pandemic, we see, boom, a dramatic fall in the value of the stock going from 600, almost $700 a share to unfortunately uh, about you know, just under $200 a share. Part of the reason for that decline could be uh, as we come out of the pandemic, less demand for home entertainment. We're starting to go out, travel, enjoy life again. Um, and also probably, you know, the fierceness of the competition. In the previous video, I mentioned that HBO Max is, is coming back to really compete uh, in this landscape of subscription services. Uh, we have YouTube TV, maybe not such a, a threat, but definitely coming in in 2017 and being another, uh, another substitute, another competitor. And of course, uh, more aggressive Disney Plus coming in 2019, right? The, you know, I think uh, right prior to the pandemic. Um, and we see the amount of content that Disney has been producing just in the last two years from Star, Work, Star Wars and Marvel content and so forth, really trying to um, be aggressive in capturing more subscribers. So we know in Monopolistic Competition that Supernormal Profit attracts competition. And so we can see here at Disney+, Plus, YouTube TV, maybe HBO Max, Amazon Prime, this, this heavy landscape of, of competition driving demand potentially away from Netflix. So here's another article, a recent article from April 2022, Netflix losing so many subscribers, they lost 200,000 subscribers around the world in the first quarter of 2022, January, February, and March. Uh, and this right here, it says it wiped about 35% of the value of the shares, about $55 billion off of its value. And one of their biggest investors, William or Bill Ackman, uh, sold off his stake on Netflix and took a $400 million loss, uh, perhaps because he's not as confident that Netflix can deal with the heavy competition that's going to come from HBO Max and uh, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime, etc. So we're going to illustrate, in this case, uh, in graph A, not Netflix at super normal profit, but instead Netflix at a loss and how they will eventually gravitate towards um, normal profit. Okay, so in a previous video, we illustrated how to draw this. Now we're gonna draw them at a loss and what they're gonna do to get to minimize that loss. Okay, so just give me one moment here and then we'll go ahead and illustrate this. Almost there. Okay. Just a few more things, and here we go. So we're going to illustrate Netflix at a loss due to the 200,000 subscribers that have unsubscribed from Netflix. And we're going to first draw our supply curve. I recommend that you first draw supply. So here we're going to have S1 equal to our marginal costs of production. Then we'll have our ATC curve coming down and then up. Here's ATC. And uh, to keep what we had here before, 
here we show that P1 equals C1. That was from the previous video. And um, we're going to just draw our demand curve below the ATC. Anywhere below the ATC will reflect that the firm is generating a loss. So here I'm going to have a relatively elastic demand curve below my ATC curve. And here I'm going to have D1 equal to the marginal benefit equal to the average revenue. And I'm just going to change this to reflect that we are illustrating Netflix at a loss. And I'll put that in red. Okay. Then we got to draw our marginal revenue curve. And we'll have that come down. And we'll label that. MR1. Assuming profit maximization, or in this case, minimizing the loss, or they're going to try to minimize their loss. And in order to do that, they will continue to produce where MR equals MC, and that sets quantity of output here. So they're going to produce along their supply curve and then stop where MR equals MC, and that will set the quantity of output at Q1. And then they will price according to their demand curve. So here is the price. Price of P1, which is equal to the average revenue at that particular point. But then we see the loss. Then what's the cost of production at that level of output? We see here's their ATC curve. And so these are their costs, C1. I'll call that also equal to my costs on average, the average total cost. Okay, and then we can highlight the loss. And since costs are greater than price or ATC, ATC here is greater than AR, the firm's generating a loss. And that will be highlighted here. So this rectangular area reflects the loss that Netflix is incurring. And that is being caused, again, because competition is entering the industry. Disney Plus, uh, YouTube TV, HBO Max, that's causing the demand curve for Netflix to decrease. All right, it's shifting inwards. Demand shifting in, and as it shifts in, it exposes uh, Netflix to that loss that we see here. So what is Netflix going to do? If we check, uh, any entrepreneur is going to try to reduce their costs. So let's see here. Um, let's see, I think I have it over here. We see here, April 2022, uh, quarter one, 2022, Netflix announced the decline in subscribers Part of it due to COVID easing, less demand because people are now going out and uh, enjoying life beyond being locked into their homes. And here we can see that Netflix had laid off 175 full-time contract employees. What does that mean? It means that they're beginning to reduce their variable costs. They're firing labor as a variable costs. They're also going to cancel the production of different uh, shows that they had planned. As they cancel shows, as they fire workers, what that's going to do is going to reduce their costs on average. It's going to push their ATC curve down and with it their supply curve. So as the entrepreneur reduces their variable costs by firing workers, cutting uh, their budget, uh, cutting planned budgets for production, ATC is going to be pulled down, supply is going to be pulled down, and that's going to take, hopefully, Netflix in the long run towards normal profit. As ATC and supply is pushed down, it's going to end up in graph B, where they're going to produce where MR equals MC, and it generates normal profit. All right, that's the idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and analyze this. Again, let's just mark some key points to help us with our analysis to illustrate where is the welfare loss and so forth. 
I'll call this point A, maybe point B, and over here point C, and this will be the welfare loss. Okay, here we see this triangular area is the welfare loss. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and analyze. As can be seen, we have uh, an illustration of monopolistic competition of a firm at a loss going towards normal profit. We're looking at the industry being subscription video streaming services. Graph A is illustrating Netflix at a loss and Graph B is illustrating Netflix gravitating towards normal profit in the long run. We're measuring price cost revenue on the Y axis, the quantity of output on the X axis. We have two upward sloping supply curves, S1, S2. According to the law of supply, equal to our marginal cost of production, it intersects with the average total cost curve at its lowest point, which signals productive efficiency. We also have four downward sloping revenue curves, D1 and D2, equal to our marginal benefit, equal to our average revenue, and our marginal revenue curve labeled MR1 and MR2. We notice that the AR curve is greater than the MR curve because we assume that the firm does not price discriminate. Also assuming that the firm will produce where uh, they're maximizing profit or at least minimizing their losses, they'll produce where MR equals MC. So in graph A, Netflix will produce along their supply curve up until MR equals MC at point A that sets output at Q1. At Q1, they will price according to their demand curve, setting price at P1, which is equal to our average revenue. And we see that at Q1, costs on average is at C1. So we see that AR is greater, I'm sorry, ATC is greater than AR, thus the firm is generating a loss, which is the shaded area within the model. The entrepreneur of Netflix will then try to reduce their costs, their variable costs, by firing labor and other resources, land capital, and that will reduce their costs on average. It will pull the ATC curve downward, which would also pull the supply curve downward. And as they do that over time, it will take them to graph B. As ATC has been pushed downward and their supply curve has been pushed downward by reducing costs of production, then we see that the uh, ATC curve is along the demand curve. So on graph B, where the firm produces where MR equals MC, at point D, it sets output at Q2. And we notice that at Q2, their price, P2, is equal to their costs, C2. Here we see that AR equals A. TC. Thus, Netflix is generating normal profit. The moral of the story, in monopolistic competition, all firms gravitate towards normal profit. And, uh, and that's it. Um, quick note about allocative efficiency. We see that at Q1, Q2, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. So there's an under allocation. The welfare loss is the triangular area that's reflected. In addition, we also see that Q1, that the uh, average total cost at point B or point E is greater than uh, minimum ATC. So both firms are productively inefficient. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.